Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. Uh, welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. My name is Adam Glenn, joined by my buddy Dax Holt. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I am uh, excited that the weekend is upon us. Yes, we uh, and for the weekend, we try to set you guys up with the top 10 stories of the week where they're a weekly rundown. These are just going to fill you guys in on the top 10 stories of the week. And this was like a fun week of stories because they're kind of all mm -hmm. random, but just fun and interesting and good. And I think you're going to enjoy the stories we're going to get into today. If you don't know the Hollywood Raw podcast, uh, we kind of like to reveal the fourth wall of Hollywood. We like to humanize Hollywood is like what, is what we like to say. We have celebrities on the show. Not only celebrities, we have paparazzi, uh, entertainment news journalists, other podcast hosts, and kind of break down what's going on in the celebrity Hollywood culture. Would you say that's accurate, Dex? I think that is 100% accurate. It's almost like you've said it before. All right, but, but today's episode is uh, trying to make it a little bit quicker for you guys so you can get in and out and know what's going on in the news world, the entertainment news world. Uh, but before we get to the top 10 stories of the week, Dax, do you have some reviews ready for us? I got some reviews. <laughs> this one goes out to someone who didn't leave their name, but their uh, their headline is uh, Prosco7. I don't know. It says, late to the game, dig listening to you, not just for the content, but always a laugh along. Thank you for introducing Fluently Ford. And yes, it is important to listen to a host with a smooth, soothing voice. I think we are all aware of this, the new way of, of speaking. Blah. All right. Thank you. I wish Very I had nice. a name to, <laughs> to thank someone, but uh, I don't. All right. Yeah. Let's go to this one. Amazing show. Straight to the point from Edgar TGHU. Thank you, Edgar. And the last one comes from, damn, no names here. Cindy NH76. Fun, real, and a blast to listen to. I'm so glad I found this podcast. I love going through their past interview slash podcast. There is so much there, even when you dig deep, hearing the things that you've never heard before. Love the Spencer Pratt interview. I've listened to it three times. Bring him back on for more. Damn, Cindy, you did love wow. Spencer. And for the record, Spencer might be one of my favorite interviews of all time ever. Him, Brooke Hogan, Kato Kalin was pretty amazing. I mean, I really enjoyed this week's episode with Asha Scott from Below Deck. Um, I was yeah, she was a lot like, of fun. I didn't know a lot about Asha before having her on. And I fell in love with her during the interview because she was so just like so full of energy had these great stories, didn't hold back at all, and that is like an interviewer's dream. It's true. That is true, my friend. Um, all right. Do we have one more? Do we want to get into uh, range right into Oh, you stories? want to do one more? Sorry. I got one more. Pittsburgh Mom 412 says, Hey, guys, started listening to you a few weeks ago. I'm a huge t uh, TMZ fan, and I love listening to your podcast. You're so raw with your material. I love the guests you've had on, especially the paparazzis you've had on to share their experience. It's a behind-the-scenes look into journalists' day in the life, and I truly enjoy every episode. So happy I found this podcast. Keep up the great work. Love you guys. Hashtag Pittsburgh proud. Well, thank you, Pittsburgh mom. I don't know your thank name, you, Pittsburgh but mom. Thank you. And let Very me delete nice. this one out before I reread it in, a, in two weeks from now. And everyone makes fun of me on our private Facebook page. <laughs> private Facebook page off the record, by the way. Join it. Check it out. It's a really good community. Uh, before we get into the top 10 stories, Dax, I sent you a video because this is not a news story, but there's James Corden video of him at the yes. Harry Styles concert. Oh my God! Well, just, where I, are we going to post that video somewhere so people, other people can see it? Because we can't I, talk I about saw it, it, not post it. Do you want to post it on just Instagram, private Facebook? Where do you want to post it? Let's put it on our private Facebook page and off the record, and have everyone talk about it because it's just so painful. It's such a painful video for me to check out. <laughs> it, am uh, I right though, or no? It, it's it's brutal, but go give some people some context. So for the people that aren't going to make it over to the Facebook page, what is it? So it's a video of James Corden with his friends and I guess his wife at the Harry Styles concert. And he's just like over the top having fun at Harry Styles, like dancing, screaming, singing. And I'm like, dude, listen, I've been to a lot of concerts. Have you ever went crazy at a concert? No. I mean, come on. Well, it's he's not. Also, he's good friends with Harry. So there is that. However, 
I think the bigger thing here is that James Corden has been just skewered in the media lately. And so he's he's trying to get people to film him because it makes him look really fun and entertaining. And I mean, I watch it. It made me laugh. It looks fun. It didn't make me laugh. It just made me feel like, oh, this guy is so lame because it's it feels so forced. It's just painful. But we'll put the video in our uh, private Facebook page uh, off the record. Join it. It's a really cool community. All right, Dax, let's get to our top 10 stories of the week. Number 10. Number 10, Tom Brady says he has zero regrets about coming back to football. Um, And I think this is really interesting because if you've been following the Tom Giselle timeline, him saying he's going to retire and then unretiring and then retiring, then unretiring over and over again, this took a big toll on his family life. And so, you know, he is now obviously divorced from Giselle that's been all over the news and so um, you know on uh, I think it was last Friday um, he was asked during a press conference uh, like hey why are you back he said I returned because I felt like I wanted to compete and I spoke to the team about it and they were excited to have me back Mm -hmm. then someone asked him do you have any regrets about coming back to football which you think he would say no because he essentially his marriage crumbled because he went back to football. He said zero, no, definitely not. So that was a huge, huge story. Um, but on top of that, Giselle has been spotted out with uh, the jujitsu instructor, which is really interesting. It looked like they were kind of on a date night the other night. Um, it's raised a lot of suspicion on whether or not they are romantically tied together um, because he was also down in Costa Rica with her and with the kids. Well, it sounds like. Um, it could go either way. It could be people are diving too deep into this because he is their children's jujitsu uh, instructor who he'll travel around along with the teacher to like, he does kind of like the, the gym or the, the PE side of homeschooling for them. And that's why he's in their life. But because he's so close to her, a lot of people are seeing this and going, is there more to this? They did kind of like a sexy photo shoot back in the day together. So I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think we were quick to jump on this and say, hey, they're, she's on a date. She's with a guy. And I think they actually, like, I guess they leaked a little bit of information the day after saying, hey, who the guy was. But they didn't, like, deny. I don't know how you just don't deny anything. Like, if it's not true, just don't deny it. Or are you throwing more gas on the fire when you, when you, let me ask you, Dax. If they were to come out after the photo was came out and said, "Hey, mm-hmm. we are not dating," does that draw more attention, or do you when you just ignore it and act like I'm not? I don't have to address all these things. Like, what's the best thing to do to resolve the situation? I, so, I think I think normally I would say ignoring because if this was a normal situation where she was just a single woman hanging out and there was a guy that came into her life, you, you don't want to have to deny every relationship all the time right in this case fresh off the heels of a divorce with one of the most high profile athletes in the world it makes her look cold and i feel like she already gets a bad rap everyone blames her for a lot of things um so i feel like it looks like she just doesn't care and has moved on so in this situation i might have said nope put out the denial you don't want to look like this like woman who could care less and has moved on already. That's my thought. Uh, very good thought, and I agree with your thought. They, they, you know, it did come out that the guy is obviously the jujitsu instructor, and the kids are homeschooled. So they, you know, since they're traveling, they're bringing their teachers with them, which that's you know, got to be crazy money. Um, but in the photos, there is no sort of there's and no you, hand. You know hold, that Giselle you know? is actually worth more than Tom Brady, right? I believe Her net it. worth is like way higher than his. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't what a world! Yeah, what she, a she what a relationship! So much money modeling. Um, I, like her, I I want to say at least a hundred million more than his, which is that's wild. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but uh, there was in the photos there was no affection at all. So I think we were ju- we were quick to jump to conclusion mm-hmm. and say, hey, she's dating, she's with this guy. We really don't know. Because there has been no sort of um, information on their side, so I think we'll, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a while until we find out if she's actually dating someone. It'll be kind of crazy if she is, but from right now, we just know as a jujitsu instructor, that's for her kids, and I know that she's trained in it a little bit, and they traveled with the family, so yep. we don't know. Gonna be right. All right, number nine. 
Number nine, Jay Leno recovering from this crazy freak incident that happened over the weekend. Um, if you've been following the story, uh, he was working on one of his cars and there was like a leak that it turned into an explosion. Um, and so he got some massive burns across his body. And so I guess they're third degree burns. Um, and it sounds like he's undergone one surgery, which was a grafting procedure, and now <laughs> will undergo a second procedure by the end of the week. So by today, at least, um, they, they did say his injuries are serious. It can, his, condition, his condition, though, however, is good. And he did well after his first surgery. He's in good spirits. Uh, that is all according to his rep, Peter Grossman. Um, but yeah, this is this is wild. And the guy loves his cars, man, loves his cars. Uh, but he was working on a 115 year old car. And I guess it was like a fuel leak simultaneously there was a spark and that's what triggered the explosion and then he credited his friend dave that was there in the the workshop at the same time for jumping on him immediately to smother out the flames scary wild story wild situation i mean i sucks bottom line it sucks it's terrible because again jay leno and his obsession with cars is like it's it's charming in a little bit. And I think Jay Leno sometimes got it's a little bit of a bad name from people like Letterman and Howard Stern talking about him. But I met him once or twice and actually he was a super nice guy. And I also admire that he is really involved in these cars. Like it's his passion, his cars and automobiles. So hopefully he can kind of get back to kind of work on the cars. It's just a crazy thing from working on cars. You, I don't, I personally wouldn't um, expect something like that to happen, but Probably does happen more than we actually learn about the yeah. li these little explosions in cars. But uh, I actually like his show, Jay Leno's Car, his Garage, Jay Leno's Garage. Yeah, I've never even watched Ripping. it. It's on like CNBC. Good show, but hopefully it gets better soon. Um, wild situation. He's lucky he had a friend. You know, he's lucky he was working on his cars with a friend there. So hopefully okay. he gets back. I'm curious to see what he looks like. I'm not sad, but. Mm -hmm. I'm not curious, but everyone's but curious like, at the end of the day yeah. people are curious to like did it get his face did it not you know who knows yeah all right number eight uh number eight uh so a judge is going to be deciding the sentence for Todd and Julie Chrisley after their federal conviction if you remember the um what, what's the name of the shark Chrisley knows best Chrisley um, knows best they, yeah yeah, they've been, they're facing between 10 and 30 years in federal prison after being found guilty on federal charges, including bank fraud and tax evasion. This has been going on for quite some time. Um, but basically, the pro prosecutors are argued that Chrisley's submitted fake documents to banks when applying for loans. And they also submitted a false credit report and fake bank statements when trying to rent a house in California. And then they refused to pay rent a few months after they started using the home. I mean, they were just wrapped up in all kinds of crazy stuff. And so federal prosecutor, federal prosecutors are asking the judge sentence uh, Todd, uh, I guess, between 17 and 22 years while asking 10 to 13 years for Julie. They also want the, the couple to forfeit nearly $20 million. Um, as, as of so far, the judge was being pretty nice and allowing them kind of like a house arrest situation. Um, but uh, everyone is kind of pushing for more, uh, at least on the prosecutor side. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think we're going to find out next week um, what the, the exact sentence is going to be um, if they do go away. Can you it's imagine a pretty wild Todd story behind federal bars oh my god I, that guy is not gonna do well in prison yeah him in jail is not gonna be pretty i mean it's been <laughs> it's interesting how that show even came to be like because he's let's be honest he's a feminine guy like he's an interesting mm -hmm. kind of weird who knows what's really going on in that relationship there and they've also been in the news with their kids i mean there's another kid it's there's a lot in that family it was crazy like when you were doing that show as far as production producers did you know that shit might not be going well you know no between, just within the family so because i'm so remember how we had ryan nomin on a couple weeks ago and he was yeah. talking about the bling ring show i'm finally watching it i'm like halfway through now and e obviously signed on alexis nyers having no idea that she was wrapped up in the bling ring and with uh nick prugo so i think that sometimes this shit just happens and you know it turns out honestly to be good for television too it's great for television because it's great for TV because it's interesting TV. So it's good for the producers. It's good for the people, like the people on the show, because they need money. So yeah. uh, it's wild. I mean, it's again, will he go to jail? 
and how long will he serve? It's to be determined. That is still but up in it's, the air. We'll see. Yes. All right. Number seven. Number seven. Will Smith embarking on a journey to freedom in his the official trailer for Emancipation. So this first is the movie. first film yeah. that is coming out after the the slap heard round the world, which was funny. So you know, obviously, I've got Trophy Smack, which is a awards company. A giant, a giant championship belt came across my desk the other day, and it literally is Will Smith smacking Chris Rock <laughs> across that's the amazing. front of a belt. <laughs> that's so good. I like that's, that's how big yeah. that moment became that now like people are naming their fantasy football teams after it. Anyway, so the trailer released for this movie, um, he is playing a slave that is looking for freedom. Basically, his entire family had been taken away from him. Um, it looks really good. Like he is wandering through the swamps of Louisiana, I believe, um, in the middle of wartime. Um, it's it looks like this is going to be a great movie. Here's the question. If he does an amazing job, which it looks like he did, can he get an Oscar nomination? <sighs> I mean, it's, it's it's actually interesting because we actually we don't have this story in the top ten stories of the week, but Brendan Fraser you know, mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, he's giving, there's a lot of people talking about him where he might get an award from the Hollywood Foreign Press and he doesn't want to go to the award show because he never got an apology and the way they treated him, you know, if mm-hmm. you know his whole situation, right? Wait, do we I, know I, it? I don't. Right. Oh, so, you know, he basically says that the president of the Hollywood Foreign Press touched him and he put the guy on blast and... The guy really never really apologized and he just now he you know now with this movie coming out and he is being getting very he's getting praised getting very high reviews and he could possibly win an award he will not go to the award show now with will smith he can't go to the oscars but will he be nominated or how does that yeah, work like, and like, also can they nominate like if, if this is the best role of his entire life on the heels of everything that happened can they will they nominate him as putting everything aside i don't i don't know the answer to that and yeah i'm just curious if he even does press for this movie and if he does he's gonna have to eventually talk about it he's gonna have to Mm -hmm. talk about the slap he hasn't really talked about with an interviewer or or anything so i'm always curious who he chooses to do his first interview with you know yes he's apologized on instagram but you know that's why we had um Steve Honig on the podcast where, you know, you deal with your PR team and say, all right, who are we going to go to? So I'm curious who he's going to do his first interview with and where it's going to go. Do you do it on your own platform or do you go to a network and make them a lot of money? And also Chris Rock, when's his first interview going to be? But I think Chris is saving it for like something big. Yeah. I think Chris is like, he's not going to do an interview. I think he'll do it for like stand up wise and make it into a joke. I don't know. I don't know if Chris you know eventually nice he's going to have to address it. I'm telling you, if the Oscars just on the down low invited will and chris to walk out on stage at the next oscars hug and that was it and like just ended the whole thing wouldn't that be kind of cool like a just cool moment like coming back out neither one of them have spoken in a year neither one of them have done anything and then the first time you see them they come back out they hug they apologize and like that moment would be so fucking huge it would be cooler if they all come out. This would be the start of the Oscars. They both come out from each different side of the stage. They come out in the middle, and then all of a sudden, Chris slaps Will and says, we're even now. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. We'll go yeah, with that, that one. I think that would be good. Fuck yeah, that let's hug. go. All right. Slap him. <laughs> all right, number six. <laughs> number six, Denise Richards says that someone – tried to shoot her in an apparent road rage incident went down here in LA. So uh, I guess Denise was all shaken, um, but she was uninjured after being a victim of road rage shooting here in Los Angeles. It was on Monday. Uh, Basically her and her husband were on the way to like a set that she needed to be filming at and a bullet hit the back of their truck. Uh, So TMZ originally broke the story that there is a, there's like a photo that appears to show a bullet hole near the back side of the driver's side of the couple's vehicle. Vehicle. Um, and apparently, I guess he was driving too slow because he didn't know where he was going. And the driver behind them became super frustrated, shouted at them. And then the person squeezed in front of them. And uh, that is, they're saying that at some point during this altercation, they were shot at, which is wild. Um, but 
I don't know. What What are your thoughts? Do you think this is real? Do you think this is a PR stunt? Like, what's happening here? Do I think it's a PR stunt? No. Uh, I think it's real. I mean, I just am curious. And I, it's, someone's got to be. TMZ's definitely. They're all looking for, you know. They're, they're tr- right now, everyone's looking for footage. Every, you know, this is how these newsrooms work. They call, they they look on the map and see what businesses are in the area, and they're all looking for footage. Yeah. Hey, do you have, do you have like they they have a twenty two year old kid, literally probably at the spot where it allegedly happened, and going, hey Exxon, hey McDonald's, hey Subway. Do you, can we look at your surveillance cameras and try to see if there's any footage of this? What I did love was in the TMZ story it said. But you know what? She did power through and filmed for 12 hours straight. I'm what like, a good actress. <laughs> <laughs> so she showed up and continued to do her job. Good job, Denise. Yeah. So, I mean, they definitely, they have, Denise had to probably obviously get her opinion inside a little bit on this story because how do you know she was on set for 12 hours and powered through it like a good actress and stuck <laughs> to the role and was in character? Uh, but yeah, I'm glad she's safe and crazy situation. And um, yeah. Wild, wild. All right, number five. Number five, Billy Ray Cyrus has announces his engagement to his soulmate, Fire Rose. Um, and he is saying it is happy and it is pure love. And I'm not going to lie. I couldn't even get through this whole article. I just wanted to yeah. gag the whole time. Uh, I mean, listen. What a weirdo, happy huh? happy in love, but they are so weird. And like, it sounds like you're talking to two hippies. Uh, or you know like that are high on drugs when they're talking about their love like they're saying that the dog basically was the matchmaker to bring them together because uh that that made him like introduce him i don't know the whole thing is very weird and i'm sorry that i don't have more details because i just wanted to gag the whole time it's weird it's interesting she's a good looking girl billy ray cyrus is uh he's just a weird looking guy i'm not gonna you know he was he was actually almost gonna come on the podcast he probably won't come on after he hears this but um <laughs> i mean well, he's a braid str- hair together it would be so much fun yeah he's just a strange looking guy and tish his ex-wife um, miley's mom is like she's an attractive cool girl but it was like they didn't break up that long ago tish no, and billy ray cyrus it was pretty quick oh uh, yeah it's it's they were together what 13 years or something like that yeah like, they were together a long time um Whatever. So yeah, I mean they've fi- they've had it issues really, before. Is, it's so weird to me. Tish and, and Billy Tish Cyrus and Billy Ray Cyrus had issues for years. I think they filed for divorce a few times. I guess they are like, all right, we finally need to get divorced. We need but to move the girl on. is yeah. You're, all right, you're done with this. All right, number you're freaked out. All right, number four. Right, now I just like the whole like I was reading the whole article to some people and feel free to go read the article, guys, and just tell me if you felt as like creeped out as I did. It's just. It's so like free loving hippie. We're just meant to be together. I'm like, okay. It's not English. People don't talk like it. And get back to life. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing in Nashville these days. I'm not saying that they actually do ayahuasca. I'm just saying that's what it felt like. Yeah, it's just weird language, and people just don't talk like that. It's just (laughs) yeah. All right, number four. Well, number four, I mean, we got to talk Taylor Swift and her releasing tickets and how it was a complete disaster for StubHub uh, and and Ticketmaster and everyone involved. Um, You know, there were people waiting hours and hours to try to get tickets. And then the resale market blew through the roof. Uh, But basically, you know, she is going out on tour. The how do you how do you even say this? The Araz tour, Eras tour. What the hell is it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Um, yeah, Eras Tour. So basically, she released the tickets. If you weren't um, a, a pre-sale member, you, you weren't getting tickets. People were waiting like 17 hours on the website trying to get tickets. Couldn't get them. Then the resale market, tickets were reaching up to, like on StubHub, $21,000 for uh, some tickets, which is crazy. Oh, and that's a single ticket. $21,000 for a single ticket, which, yeah, maybe floor, but who the hell is paying that, it, you know, when that ticket originally cost $350, um, but it was just a big debacle. Everyone you saw, I saw a lot of people tweeting, posting on Facebook. That they were f- so frustrated that they were had their spot in line, but then the, the website kicked them off, like all yeah. kinds of stuff. So a StubHub representative, I guess, told CNN Business that the, the resale site had so many swift ticket sales for around um, 
let's see, what is it selling for around 150 with averages around 600? However, they noted that the only pre-sale period right now, the demand is so high that these prices will eventually settle. So they're, they're making it sound like things are going to be okay, uh, even though they're out of control. Yeah, there's... Ticketmaster sort of screwed up. They, I don't think they were ready for this. They, you know, they're saying it, this was a historically unprecedented demand for millions of fans, and that's basically what crashed the site. I mean, they brought in four times the normal amount of people that tried to kind of get these seats, and so you know, in, they're in they're part, bots. If, if you're Taylor Swift, are you kind of like giggling to yourself that your ticket sales are? your fans are so crazed that it shut down Ticketmaster or are you annoyed because it's like not the proper way and you feel like your fans are getting robbed of this, like this moment. I'm just curious, like how that must feel being her. I think it's just, I think it's got it. We can't speak for her. And I can't even say if I was in her position because there's only one person in that position. That's Taylor Swift. We will never be in that position. I can't think of this being a good move because, again, you're just pissing people off. Will you still sell out the arenas? Yes, but this is going to be a. This could turn into a very, very ugly situation. Yeah, like this she might turn into hey, everyone means. gets their money back. I don't, and it, I, this is above her. Like she really personally can't deal with this except address it on her platform. This goes with her team and the and the business around her, but this is not good. This is a lot of work, and that they were hey, not I, ready can for. I say- I just want to show you the power of Taylor Swift. Um, and I don't know if you heard this, but she became the first artist ever to simultaneously claim all top 10 spots on the Billboard Hot 100 following the release of Midnight's. Um, that is really cool. Again, you guys know what I what I say about Taylor. and like She's, she's not my favorite celebrity on the planet. Um, I do think she's got great music. I think she's crazy talented. Um, but that's really damn impressive. Yeah, um, yeah, it's good for Taylor, but again, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty. I'm not a, you know, this, this is going to be a really shitty situation. It's this is a really crazy, wild situation that's above Taylor. It really goes through tick, Ticketmaster, but it's going to affect Taylor and her businesses. They, I could see them just saying, you know, anyone who bought tickets, we have to. You don't have tickets, we have to redo our system. Yeah, like. like- we're gonna wipe. Let's start clean over. And start fresh. Yeah, we're gonna start piece. fresh. That would piss so many people off. Yes. Right? It's, but something's gonna happen. All right, number three. Now we're getting even more a little spicy. All right, Brad Pitt spotted getting cozy with Paul Wesley's ex-wife Inez de Ramon, uh, and this was at an LA concert. And uh, so you know Paul Wesley, if, or if you don't recognize the name, he was on Vampire Diaries for a long time. Um, and him and his wife, I, I think his well his ex-wife. They split up like two months ago, like not even yeah. that long ago. And yeah, but it now seems Brad like they're Pitt is already swooped in and is hanging out with her at the Orpheum Theater. This girl is super hot, by the way. I don't even know what she does or who she is, but she's really pretty. But Paul is already seeing someone else as well, so it's not like she just left Paul Wesley and went to someone else. Paul is obviously seeing another person, and now this girl Inez is speaking, talking to, hanging out with, getting cozy with. Banging, I don't know, with Brad Pitt, but it, she looks great. That, that um, they were at this concert. Makes me think that her and Paul were doing worse for a very long time and had mentally checked out of their relationship a long time ago. Because when you see this, when they like announce a divorce and then suddenly they're dating new people, that just means they're they're finally like, okay, we don't have to hide it anymore that we're not together. Yeah, Brad Pitt's 58, this girl's 29. I don't know how these people meet. That's what I'm more curious. How do you meet? How do you connect? How do you get on a date like when you're Brad Pitt? And Brad Pitt looks incredible for 58. Whatever. Yeah. That's what I want in Hollywood. Tell me what these guys, we already know what the females do, but I wonder what the males are doing. What are the males doing that they're able to put on so much muscle that they're they're able to kind of keep their jawline like a Rob Lowe type look? It's just, uh, I don't know. Pass it's insane. Or whatever it is. But they're seeing, um, they're spotted at the concert, being a little bit affectionate. It's a Bono you know, concert. By the way, they're hanging I, out. I don't think I said that it was a Bono concert. And Cindy Crawford was there, Randy Gerber, Sean Penn. Sean Penn. So, yeah, yeah. So there was a bunch of people. It was a, it was a big deal. Yeah, they were cool. And it seems like he wasn't hiding her, you know, which is surprisingly. But they did hide on the on the way out. Apparently, he, Brad Pitt drove home and she got a security car, like a mm-hmm. like a security SUV kind of took her home, but probably went back to his place, you know, just to kind of throw them off a little bit or if anybody was following. Yep. 
All right. All right. Number two. Number two, Candace Cameron Burr getting just crucified by uh, media after being asked if Great American Family, the network she is working with, will include LGBTQ storylines in their projects. And she responded by saying, I think that Great American Family will keep traditional marriage at the core. Woo! That didn't sit well. Um, yeah. A lot of people coming forward telling her, wow, thanks for basically, you know, saying that gay and all these other type marriages are non-traditional. And basically you're excluding a lot of people and they just felt like it was a really rude comment to say, especially if she is leading up, you know, uh, network programming then you should be inclusive of everyone, not just kind of like your personal faith, faith based beliefs. And uh, Jojo Siwa ripped her apart. Um, a lot of people ripped her apart this week. Yeah, it's Can- Candace Cameron somehow in the past few years has kept her name afloat, like in the in the headlines and media. But I know nothing about her. You know, like, I mean, I know nothing. I don't know what she's done besides like being on The View for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, her her brother was a, a child star who's now like a who's like an evangelical minister now. Mm-hmm. Like isn't something he or is like he a born again yeah. Christian? Something like that. Yeah, he's know. very kind of controversial. But I mean everyone from Hillary Burton to like has given her so much shit and she's not backing down either. No, but she, you know what was interesting so let me talk about the most interesting thing. So Jojo, you know, she posts on social media basically like you know, honestly, I can't believe after everything that went down the last few months that you would not only create a movie with the intention of excluding LGBTQIA+, but then also talk about it to the press. This is rude and hurtful to a whole community of people. But the first comment comes from Jody Sweeten. You know I love you, two hearts. God, I love me some Jody Sweeten jumping in there because Jody and Candace Cameron obviously our very close friends have worked together for years did the reboot of full house i mean that's probably one of her best friends and she's sitting there going whatever she said i don't agree with it i am in support of the lgbtq community yeah i mean listen she, at, at, at some point unfortunately in this world you know if you're associated with that person you're going to have to address it and i think mm-hmm. uh jody props to her stepping up before someone even asked her came out and said hey this is what's going on it's uh, yeah. she's can, not can I add down. her can I add Jody Sweeten to one of my lists of she was one of our favorite guests too because she was we've done, awesome yeah. when she came on so cool so nice so awesome so fun that's one of those interviews I forget we've done so, how many episodes have we done Dax dude like I don't even know at this point like a hundred and fifty or something like that I thought uh, it was like more interviews. than that I would say 150 yeah. interviews plus all of our weekly rundowns so um, yeah the weekly, we've probably done 50 weekly rundowns, so we're looking at like 200 episodes, but 150 interviews, I would say. I forgot about like Jody Sweden, but she was a great, and if you go back, listen to her interview, and she's just so real about Hollywood and the industry, even money, you know, as an mm-hmm. actress, uh, being on a successful show, she's just so honest and cool about it. But props for her stepping up. Candace Cameron's not backing down. We'll see if people tune in. All right, Dax, the number one story of the week. I think you guys probably know what it is. Uh, Pete Davidson and Emily Radzikowski are quote unquote seeing each other, according to a source at People Magazine. Um, you know, listen, the both of them are probably the most high profile uh, bachelor and bachelorettes on the market right now. Pete Davidson has dated pretty much every hot woman under the sun, including Kim Kardashian, Ariana Grande, Kaya Gerber, Kate Beckinsale, and now it looks like is potentially dating Emily Radzikowski. Emily is fresh off her divorce. Um, she was spotted out with Brad Pitt a couple weeks ago um, and then some like big DJ we talked about on the rundown as well and now her and Pete have been photographed together uh, hanging out doing like it looks like some kind of date night Um, give me your thoughts and then I'm going to give you my thoughts Um, so I know a lot of people in our group are turning into this right now because they want to hear what we have to say so Pete had a I'm going to start from like the really beginning, kind of give you some more information of like what's been going on. So Pete had this uh, how uh, a condo apartment condo 
in Staten Island that he was living in. It had a beautiful view of New York City. It was a cheap, it was a pricey condo. And this is the condo that Kim went back to. It's the condo that Miley Cyrus went back to. And Miley Cyrus did not hook up with Pete. It was just like them just smoking weed or just hanging out a little bit. Pete's been renting out that condo and he moved into this place in Brooklyn in Dumbo, I believe. And he, it's a very private type place. Like it's a garage, as you saw last night, if you saw the photos. Pete is not really serious with anyone. He's um, trying to say how I'm trying to put this for what I know, and I have enjoying to enjoying kind of pre- the single life. Yeah, but not like where he's also hooking up with a ton of girls. Um, there was reports came on out too early about this, and they were definitely were not together. Like this is like very, very, very fresh. Like this. Mm-hmm. Like this, they have not been seeing each other for a while. Like they're, it's very, very slow and very, very. Um, but okay, I'm gonna give you. All my right, no, it, no, no. Yeah, give me your opinion. Then I'm, uh, yeah, then I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna PR throw something stunt. else at you. This is a big PR stunt, in my opinion. And don't get me wrong, I think, I think Pete's love life is covered more as a storyline than his comedic career at this point. And I think the more beautiful women he dates, it perpetuates that storyline. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I just think that it works for him and for his exposure. And same with Emily. Whoever she dates works really well. So the fact that the two of them are together makes sense because two of them together is a great fucking story that everyone's going to pick up. Yeah, it's a great story, but who is it better for? Is it good for Pete or is it good for Emily? It's good for my both opinion. of them. It's not. So I disagree. I think it's, it's great for both of them. It's great for Emily because she has nothing to lose. If anything, she has the. What has Emily done? She was in a blurred line music video showing her boobs five years ago with Robin Thicke. Besides that, she did, you know, obviously she's done some modeling stuff, but really it's. She did um, that movie with Ben Affleck. Gone Girl, whatever. Uh, yeah. But besides that, again, how many years ago was that? It's a it great move for Emily. I think it's still good for both of them. She was just potentially dating Brad Pitt and Pete Davidson within a month of each other. It it works. And again, I would say it's funny how everyone Emily dates seems to get out there in the press right away. That's why I think a lot of the people she dates is it's a, a manufactured thing because it then gets leaked out. Yeah, um, the, but again, I think it's, and this is where, if we want some, so I talked to a few sources close to Pete, and they're a little bit nervous. They're they're nervous, one, A, that someone on her side is leaking the information, and then number two, they're, they're nervous about Pete's personal life becoming too big for his work life, and, you know, and that's I a, always say that. That's a true risk. That is, yeah. that is a true risk. Yeah, it there, happened. He's become... we, Julia Fox just said the same thing. Remember, she said, "Yeah, my personal life with Kanye ruined my acting career." Yeah, and the thing is, I think as Pete, you need to make a decision. You know, listen, Pete's going to be very financially well off. Do you want to be famous for being famous, or do you want to be famous for being a comedian and an actor? I think you need to make that decision in your life. And listen, there's nothing wrong with either. There's people that now that are just making money just from being famous kim kardashian being one of them obviously she made a business out of it um even people like someone like uh uh sophia richie one of those type people where like oh you know she is from the headlines but you don't know exactly what she does so if pete's gonna go that that route there's no problem with it but if you want to bounce back and have directors really take you seriously i think that better be that's going to be an issue with that said i i think pete is focusing right now on this new uh Peacock, NBC Peacock show that he's filming with um, Edie Falco and Joe Pesci. This show better be good. Yeah, this show better agreed. be good. This is his moment to shine. You're yeah. off SNL. You're not with Kim anymore. Shine. Like, I want to see him become a big star. That's yeah. It. Yeah. All right. Let, I think that's good. Let's wrap it up. We went way over time, but we had some good topics to talk about today. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please head on over to iTunes, scroll down to the bottom, leave us a review, say uh, 
you know, something kind or something not nice, but at least leave us five stars. Um, that way we can move up in the algorithm through iTunes and kind of be put in front of other people so that they can hear our show as well. Thank you guys for stopping by. And if you want to join us in our private conversations, head on over to the private Facebook group off the record. Um, you can find it, just search Hollywood raw, then find off the record. Um, we are letting people in every day to chat with us about some of our topics that we don't talk about on here. And Adam's also going to put up his, what was it? The video of James Corden on there. Yeah. And uh, the video, cause I try to save it, but check that video I sent you. I got to find like a video that I could save and put on our TikTok page. So yeah, I mean, our, our TikTok put it on our Facebook page. Yeah. And then uh, make sure you guys follow us on social media. Um, I'm at Dax Holt. Adam's at at M Glenn. And you can find the Hollywood raw on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere you consume your social media. All right, guys. Till next week. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.